Sweaty Bessie. I've taken my trusty Kranzel K7 for granted for far too long now, so uh, to make amends, I've put the car washing on hold so that I can treat the sturdy brass pumped German to some much needed TLC instead. So despite the heavily used and abused washer still working like new, with no leaks, weird noises or loss of pressure, hasn't been treated to so much as a single oil change in 7 years, so it was long overdue one of those, but to make things a little more video worthy and at least appear like I care about my equipment, decided to replace the water seals here too. The completely worn through yet still fully functioning original rubber hose was also to be replaced as I couldn't continue tempting fate with a blowout and the pressure gauge had recently spilled its glistering guts so the plan of action for the day was simply to tend to all of that which with filming, faffing and my limited servicing skills would likely take me the entirety of it. I thought it was better to get the seals seen to first, so crack the four hex bolts securing the pump to the aluminium body using the torque of a ratchet to break them loose as they'd obviously been in situ for the best part of a decade. Once they were out, I then gently coaxed the tarnished brass unit off the Kranzel's three internal pistons, being careful not to be too heavy handed with it in the process. In order to fit the new seals, the manky old ones obviously had to be removed, so it started with the few that were sitting on the steel pistons, which were prized off with a plastic spudger used for computer repair so as not to inflict any unnecessary wear and tear. The brass collars snugly housed inside the pump were then gently eased out with Father Jack's toenail clippers, being careful not to compress or scratch them in any way. Then once they were all free, popped off the rubber o-rings to make way for the new ones. Last but not least were some chunky plastic seals that needed a sturdy prod from a flathead screwy, which is okay to use as long as you're careful and let the seals themselves take the hit rather than the smooth brass housing surrounding them. The freshly exposed surfaces were then wiped over with a general purpose towel just to ensure they were clean and contaminant free prior to reassembly, as the last thing you want is a stray bit of grit making its way into the pump and potentially causing issues later down the line. The brass collars were then fitted with the new o-rings before being rebuilt with the other replacement bits that sit inside them, and before being slipped back into position their outer edges as well as those of the pistons were lightly greased with some vintage mobile one stuff I'd found lurking in the deepest recesses of the shed, favouring a light film of it on the surface rather than thick wads of the stuff. Now, although the collars were initially pulled from the pump, they were slid over the pistons and pushed back into the aluminium housing of the washer here, which seemed like an easier way of doing things as opposed to potentially unevenly forcing them back into the half cylinders of the loose pump. Speaking of the loose pump, it was then on to arguably the most difficult part of the process which entailed three hard plastic seals being firmly finessed into place. Now I'm sure there's a dedicated tool for this, but I only had a screwy to hand so uh, just had to carefully persist until I found the knack and managed to safely get them all squeezed in. A few final rubber jobbies were then dropped over the plastic items and the pump was gently wiggled back into position on the washer before being secured with the hex bolts remembering that the longer ones went at the top, nipping them up by hand this time so as not to stress the aluminium threads behind.
It was then time to change the seven year old oil. So after mounting the 20 kilo unit on a bit of timber, remove the plastic filler up top to release any pressure. Crack the sump plug with a spanner and then removed it by hand before dropping it into the tray like a plonker. Because the old stuff was so stale, I added a few glugs of fresh oil to help flush the chamber, and while that was draining, removed the plastic indicator window to clean the inside of that as well as the threads behind it so I could clearly see what was going on when subsequently refilling. After retrieving the magnetic sump from the creamy milkshake, rinsed it off and removed any metal filings of which there was a small amount so had definitely been at least a bit of wear over the years, before refitting and securing that as well as the freshly cleaned plastic window. The washer, which takes a quarter of a litre of lube, was then steadily filled with the fresh Kranzel stuff as cack handedly glugging it in can cause air to become trapped inside. And once the level was roughly at the top of the plastic window, which can be checked by rocking the machine back and forth, replace the plastic filler cap at the top, which is better to do with a ring spanner to prevent rounding it off. But I didn't have a chunky 19mm one to hand, so uh, just carefully tightened it up with an adjustable instead. Following the oil, the empty pressure gauge also needed refilling, so broke that free with a 12mm spanner and untwisted it by hand once it was nice and loose. The little rubber cap was then popped off and it was slowly filled to the brim with the thick vegetable glycerin I'd picked up the day before, which seemed to behave like the original German Kranzel stuff, so figured it should be okay. Once filled, it was sealed and refitted to the pump, making sure to uh, secure it with the Kranzel logo facing outwards as it was before. Now, I know many of you would like to have seen me crack the Brasso out for a full on restoration detail, but a genuine workhorse like this wouldn't look right all spick and span in my opinion, as the layers of dirt and various battle scars represent the years worth of blood, sweat and tears I've spent putting myself out there. But that being said, I did give the plastic panel up top a good wipe over and tickle with some all purpose cleaner, a towel and a brush just to make it appear a bit less tatty. The fresh new hose was then fitted with the generic brass quick disconnect bits from the old one as I do detach it for more compact storage. And with that done all that was left to do was hook it up to the hose pipe for a test run. So once primed through with the unit switched off to work any air out, fired it up to check for leaks, noises or vibrations which thankfully there didn't seem to be any of so gave the trigger a squeeze to check the pressure and needle movements both of which seemed to be perfectly normal so concluded the self-service a bit of success. While I obviously don't recommend letting yours go this long without any attention, it should be reassuring to know that these uh, quality machines can still endure a fair bit of neglect. So as always, thanks for watching, see you in another 8 years or so for an oil seal change, and yeah, cue the snotty comments about a so-called guru failing to keep on top of his equipment.